whole thing started because I've been going to different towns in the desert for decades. And so we always seek out little saloons in little old mining towns, little broken ghost towns, or anything like it. Bunch of us would in four buys after being out all dusty after four or five days, climb in, have a good time, and then head out. And we just love doing that. We love meeting the local people. We like hanging out there. And so we start keeping a list of all these saloons in Nevada, in Arizona, in California, and other places. And I kept this long list. And I've been wanting to do the saloon tour thing for like years now. And I showed Eddie the list. And I'm glad he's picked this up because you know what? If it wasn't for him organizing this thing, it'd be another 15 years before I get around it. So thank you, Eddie. Hey, I appreciate you putting it together. Woo. Thank you for the idea. To right. so the whiskey one of us. Cheers. Cheers. Good morning. Good morning. It's going to be a great day. We got a little cross breeze. It's nice. We got squirt guns. Can't. Squirt guns, I can't tell them. We're gonna try to figure out how to ambush them. It's like, should we just ambush them with ours and fill them up? Or should we maybe put all of theirs empty on the seats? That way we give them a little bit of a chance. <laughs> Carl's gonna just pee in his then. <laughs> <laughs> Letting a little air out, getting ready for some dirt. <laughs> So to be fair, a trip like this could easily be done in any state across America. But what really makes it so special and so much fun to do in Nevada is that pretty much all of it can be done on dirt and, maybe more importantly, on old historic stage routes. starts to disappear right about up here but uh, just follow the two tracks from space if you look down you can see like there are all these like parallel lines it's not just the one road that's like the most used one. Really? But these are all like the wagon swales. Oh, look, a tin. That's what we were just looking at. Oh, There's yeah, and you could tell that it's old. A big one right there. Because you see that? You know what that is? No. It's a lead solder. Huh. You would never do that today. No. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Well, what's cool is, as I was telling them from space, if you look on from satellite view, yeah. these tracks, there's a whole bunch of parallel tracks because, em. right. This is the general direction, and people just rode on whatever they could. Yeah. So these wagon swales were later on, and it was in 1905, actually, that the Nevada Mobile Transit Company bought all the stage routes in this area and start driving cars, and we'll see some wrecked ones up ahead, but cool. it's pretty cool. This is Spanish Springs. This is one of many of the stops that the stage you know, stage coaches would have stopped at. There's actually water still here. There's a well that if you open up this lid, you can see. Check it out, Doug. Here it is. Oh, cool. This is the reason why people came here. Yeah, it's very cool. Oh yeah, that is cool. And you can see a lot of the, the trash that's out here isn't like Budweiser cans or bottles. You'll see a lot of this uh, purple glass and green glass. This is all historic stuff right here. That's like 
old school glass. Right, and then Super you can see thick. here, these are this is porcelain from plates. Oh yeah. And you can even see right here, there's a little bit of a mark from uh, the bottom of the plate. And you can tell it's old because, oh, look on oh, this shoot, side. Oh shoot, look at that. Oh, yeah. Didn't even see that at first. That's cool. I think somebody just threw that out here. It's new, like from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Manhattan, Nevada, of course, and to our very first watering hole of the day, Miner's Saloon. Nice so what's interesting about this town is uh, they found silver in this town in 1866, but mining petered out just like three years later. The real strike happened in 1905, but the problem was is that all the people who were investing in here lived in San Francisco. What happened in 1906? Earthquake. Earthquake. Exactly. So all the money that was invested here to find this over is taken back to San Francisco after the earthquake to help rebuild it. So that's what happened in this town. That's why it became a ghost town. So nobody ever came back for the silver? Uh, a little bit here and there, but not really. So what you're saying is there's a lot of silver I can find. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go for a lot. Let's go. It's an old, old, old one. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as smart of an answer as it comes. <laughs> no, a uh, man found it in 81. So really? we've been, it's been going since 81. Oh, wow. He found yeah. it out here, not unbroken? Yes, he sure did. That's amazing. And to Sharon, indeed. Belmont. Established in 1865, this was once a thriving town and for almost 40 years had served as the county seat for Nye County. Today, it's the home of Dirty Dicks, an awesome saloon out in the middle of nowhere and known for their killer Bloody Marys. So Ben, tell me about that last stretch yeah. that we went over. It's a little rough with the washboards. Yeah, how Sweet. fast were you going? Well. 40 was the was the key I found eventually, but we're going too slow. It was just <laughs> <laughs> I felt good about my, myself. Felt yeah. Like chubby, like, <laughs> Wait, who, who thought that they had a flat tire? Was it Garrett? Did you say you thought you had a flat tire? Absolutely. <laughs> and why why is that? It's just too bumpy. The tire. Boom 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 boom. Maybe two flat tires. I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty rough. Of course, no trip to Belmont would be complete without a visit to its beautiful courthouse. In 1864, October 31st, they voted Nevada in as a 36th state. So by 1867, Belmont was the going thing. This didn't come along until 1875-76. Now you gotta think, you don't go down to Lowe's or Home Depot. Everything you see here was harvested right here, other than the lumber. Come on in, guys. Watch as you come upstairs. There's a lot of grip points, and some of the gold noses on these steps are missing. As if it could be, yes, this here was the court. Story behind 
Charlie is just before the Tate LaBianca murders. Him and his people showed up here in a bus. We had an old gal that lived here, Rose Walters, lived over in the combination building. And Charlie was going to move in here and stay for a while. Well, Rose being the feisty old gal she was, she met him with a shotgun and told him, no, Charlie, you're not going to stay here. If you want to stay for a while, you go up to Pine Creek and you stay there as long as you want to. Well, Charlie reluctantly, he went to Pine Creek. A couple weeks later, he came back and he... Uh, Stopped in and thanked Rose, said, hey, Pine Creek was very nice. We really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. About two weeks later, the uh, Tate LaBianca murders happened. And when it all started hitting the radios and TV and newspapers and everything, there happened to be somebody in the building, and they happened to notice that. We cannot say it was Charlie's hand that did it, if it was one of his persons that did it, but that's when it showed up. It's funny how the dumbest things always seem to happen on the easiest of trails. After getting a call on the radio to turn back around, this is what we found. That's good stuff. Anything that we try to do, he just slides, whether it's forward or back. So, winching might be actually is the only possibility at this point. <laughs> so, I think uh, Garrett's sweating a little bit. <laughs> What happened? Uh, I was coming around the corner and my uh, coasting down and my PSC locked up and I had no steering. So I slid, locked up the brakes and slid into this awesome position. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so clearly, this was more of an embarrassing situation than a life-threatening one. And while Garrett may have been able to get out on his own, we had the tools and decided it was just as easy to put them to use. Um, possibly. Hang on one sec. I think it's time to break out the printers.
While Carver's isn't exactly a ghost town, it is a place that we could call home for the night. And of course, it never hurts to stay in a place where you can get a cold one. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. <laughs> All right, folks, we're okay. getting to this bad part of the country where we've been running guns. You're going to have to take one. You don't know when you're going to need it. <laughs> Come on. Choose your weapon. Choose your weapon. <laughs> I had a big gun, baby. <laughs> We don't supply the ammo, you're on your own for that. No bodily fluids though. <laughs> Give me a smaller one. Uh-huh. It's It's my holster, quick draw. Yeah. Alright, since we're all here, let's saddle up. We're gonna start heading up north out of town. Alright. <laughs> See all these little uh, I'm all shot up. <laughs> Out of ammo. <laughs> These are the remnants of the old Park Canyon stamp mill. It was built back in 1867 to service the nearby Buckeye Mine, and even though you won't be finding any saloons here, it's always fun to stop and explore the myriad of mining camps that you're sure to come across on a trip like this. Located at the northern end of the Big Smoky Valley and nestled along the base of the Toyabe Range, there's a small town that you can find called Kingston and it's home to 
the Lucky Spur Saloon. of what most people seem to think, there really is a whole lot more to Nevada than just Las Vegas and the desert that surrounds it. The truth of the matter is, Nevada has over 300 mountain ranges, most with peaks over 10,000 feet, and because of it, it's officially the most mountainous state in the lower 48. In fact, the word Nevada means snowclad, as in snow-covered ranges, and there are plenty of years where passage across one like this can be blocked with the white stuff and well into the month of July. Fortunately, we got lucky. I should have brought the super, super soak. <laughs> We're in the town of Austin, just on the outskirts. This was built by Anton Stokes in 1897. This is a three-story villa. They only lived in it for about a year, but it's based on the architecture of the Roman Campania that they had seen uh, back in the day. And um, anyway, he was a railroad magnate, he real estate developer, everything else in between. Yep. That's really cool. It is. This is the town of Austin. Not to be confused with the capital of Texas, and it's the home of the International Hotel and Saloon. Now, what's so cool about this place is that it was originally built in Virginia City back in 1860, dismantled three years later, and then moved piece by piece to this very location. The final leg of our whiskey wanderlust would be an overland journey across the Pony Express and Central Overland Trail. top of Smith Creek Summit. This is on the Central Overland Trail, as you can see right here. 
Central Overland Trail Smith Creek Summit. We want to get to Smith Creek by night, which is 25 miles distant. We traveled over mountainous country this forenoon. We stopped for dinner on a mountain. It rained some and thundered very loud. Ada Millington, August 16th, 1862. That's quite a woman there. <laughs> Start turning driver, then a little bit. There you go, climb it. There you go. Well, it seemed solid enough, or at least up until it wasn't. Can you back up? Turn, um, turn driver. Ba back up a little bit. We're in it. But I suppose you could say this was yet another reminder as to why it's always a good idea to go wheeling with friends. Fortunately for us, there was another way around. Or so we thought. Not, ex oh, not exactly what I was expecting. Well, going straight was the better way to go than because we would have run into this guy. <sighs> what? No way to cut some trees and go that way? Back up and go. Well, if you look here, it actually looks pretty solid. So if we turn in early, I think we can come in through here. Let me take a look. Start turning in. Your lockers are on, right? Best you can, try to stay on the dry surfaces. When you get to the big hole with that board in it, 
Try to stay on the passenger side high. So I'm gonna go this way and then zigzag back the other Correct. Way. But just before you get to that water hole, you need to be you giving. Need to creep through this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Give it gas at that big water hole. Okay. Okay? I'll tell you when to go, so. so creep through this. Yes. You're good. There you go. High on the passenger side. Go, get, get, get it, 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 get it. There you go. That's the way to do it. Yeah. This is so wrong. After two days and over 250 dusty miles of driving across Nevada, visiting old ghost towns, and imbibing in their saloons, we arrived at our final Whiskey Wanderlust destination, Middlegate Station. Cheers, you guys!